how did I pay for all of this gear? I've seen it in a thousand comments over the years. I've had many, many people ask me about it. Today, I want to explain it to you. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. Now this this video is much less to appease the commenters, the the hundreds and hundreds of it must be nice comments or trust fund baby comments. Like it could not be further from the truth. But this is less about replying to those comments and more about trying to let you guys see behind the curtain of how I got here. And maybe to let you know that it's possible, it's doable, even coming from absolutely nothing. So in order to explain this, we have to go way back. I'm 18 years old, I just graduated high school, and I start actually getting into music seriously. I started playing guitar when I was 12 or 13. Uh, I had a Fender Strat that I still have, and I had a Yamaha Acoustic that I still have. Uh, and that was it. That was all, the, oh, I might have had an amp. I had some sort of little crate amp or something, but that was it. That was all the music gear that I had. I don't want to spend too much time going down this dark path, but my mom passed away shortly after I turned 19, and I was forced to move out of home and go on my own. And when I moved out, I literally took a suitcase full of clothes, those two guitars, and my home stereo. I had like some floor standing speakers and a receiver and a CD player. That was it. That was all that I took with me when I moved out of home. So I'm barely 19 and I move out and I had been working at a music store already, Flores Music in Peoria, Illinois, where I'm from. It's still open. Uh, it's in a different location, but it's still open there. And I was making $5 an hour selling guitars and working on guitars as a guitar tech. But spending 52 hours a week in a music store, uh, you want stuff. A lot of stuff. And we were like one of the best dealers between Chicago and St. Louis, you know, Gibson and PRS and Mesa Boogie and like plenty of like upper end stuff and spending 52 hours a week around that stuff. It got me. It, it gave me the bug. But $5 an hour is not nearly enough to like hardly pay your bills. So I joined a cover band. Like almost immediately I got in a cover band that was playing seven or eight gigs a week and I was making... <laughs> $80 a gig, $100 a gig here and there. But that turned into many hundreds more dollars per week. And I also was in an original band. Obviously, we made no money as an original band, but I did that. So I did that for a period of time. And this music store would let me put gear on a tab and let me make payments on it which is an awful thing for a 19 year old. They would garnish my wages. They, I would go up to one of my bosses, either Victor or Tony Flores, and I would be like, hey, I really want this PRS. And they'd be like, okay, you can take this PRS and we're gonna take $100 a week out of your, out of your paycheck or whatever it was. I think I was, I was only making 250 bucks a week anyway. So fast forward a little bit, uh, I needed more money. So I started a acoustic duo, uh, Colt 45 and Johnny Walker was the name of my acoustic duo. And we very quickly became one of the hardest gigging and uh, more accomplished acoustic duos in central Illinois. And we played all over the place. We're playing many, many nights a week um, and was doing that for a long time. And we were very well paid for doing that. And then I uh, started running sound. Uh, I, I started putting a ton of equipment on my tab at the music store to get a PA put together to run sound for other bands. I eventually had a pretty sizable PA that would I could do about 3,000, 4,000 people outdoors with the lights and everything. Um, and so I did that. And basically what I was just trying to do is I was just grasping at anything musical to make money at. What is anything that's connected to music that I could use to pay my bills and help me invest further into music gear. Now, simultaneously, I was also recording people at this time. Uh, I did my first record like almost as soon as I started working at that music store and I put some recording equipment on my tab and I made payments uh, on some microphones and the hard disk recorder that I had. And as soon as our album was done and we released it and the first song that I ever did got played on FM radio back in Peoria, Illinois, and a handful of other bands heard it and they're like, oh, that sounds really good. Can you record us? And so for little or no money. I was recording other people as well. So at this point, I'm running a PA, running sound for other bands. I was also mixing front of house at other clubs on uh, the installed PAs. Uh, I was had an acoustic duo. I was in a cover band. I was in an original band. I was recording other people, and I was still working 52 hours a week 
at the music store. And this is the foundation for how I paid for everything. It was a very, very short amount of time later that I worked 52 hours a week at that music store and took home no money. They took my entire paycheck because I was investing in gear and I was paying my bills with uh, cover gigs, mostly cover band and acoustic duo, and then the recording stuff. So on top of running a tab, I think at one point it was up to like $14,000 as like a 21-year-old, I also was investing every single dime I made from all of those different things back into music. And when I say every dime, I mean every dime. I didn't go on vacations. I didn't take trips. I didn't travel. Uh, I didn't have any extracurricular interests. I didn't do anything else. I didn't have any other hobbies. I probably spent a little bit too much money on alcohol because I was young and out all the time. But even playing so many gigs, it really helped me. So my weekly schedule at this point in time, and then we'll get back into the gear side of it. My weekly schedule at this time is I hosted an open mic uh, acoustic open mic on Tuesday nights. I had a standing gig at a club on Wednesday nights, acoustic. Uh, I, uh, let's see, on Thursday nights, my acoustic duo would play almost every Thursday night. And Friday and Saturday nights were always booked between original band shows, cover band shows, running sound for other bands, mixing at the clubs, like whatever. And then anytime there was gaps in that where I didn't have gigs, I was doing studio work, like a hundred. So, uh, Every day, all day was filled, and every night, all night was filled, seven days a week. I would regularly spend all day Sunday, 12, 15 hour days in the studio after having worked all day Saturday and played all night Saturday night. And so for the longest time, I just started investing in whatever could help me make more money. It wasn't so much about what I wanted. It was about, oh, if I get this next set of subwoofers for the PA, I can do bigger shows and that will make me more money. Oh, if I have uh, you know, this recording stuff so I can record a full drum kit live, that will make me more money because now I can do that. Uh, every single thing, oh, I'm in a cover band and an original band and we play in different tunings. So I need a guitar, you know, set of guitars for the cover band, set of guitars for the original band and having those will let me make more money. And that was just my my thought process the whole time was constant investment in the gear. Sure, I was buying stuff that I liked, uh, but it was for the purpose of how do I create more revenue income so I can put more revenue back into the gear so I can make more money, so I can put more money into gear. That was my thought process. And so that is another thing that I want to get across is this cycle that I'm explaining here. This lasted for... 17 years, 16 to 18 years. I mean, this was a really, really long time that I did this, exactly like this. So eventually I got tired of running sound. The energy expenditure of, of getting to the gig three hours before the band and running for the whole night and then tearing down for two hours after the band left and the, the amount of hours I was putting in uh, to the live sound thing, it just wasn't... I wasn't seeing the reward uh, financially. So eventually I sold the whole PA, the trailer with the whole PA all at once. And then I took 100% of that money and it went into studio gear. That was probably about year year 10 or 12 of my career, somewhere around there. And then once I got into a commercial studio, once I built my first studio downtown Peoria, I had to get a couple investors. Now, this is an important part of the story. One of my investors was a scientist at a lab in Peoria who had come into the music store for years and years and years. And we really got along. We really hit it off well. But more importantly than that, he watched me forever, for years and years and years, before he loaned me a dime. And he watched my character and how hard I was working and how I did what I said I was going to do. If I booked a gig, I was at the gig. If I booked a session, I was at the session. I, I was honest and super hardworking. And that eventually led to him loaning me money. Uh, and the first piece of money, I, uh, the first piece of gear I bought because of the money he loaned me was my event Opals, the studio monitors that I ran until not all that long ago. So he loaned me the money and I paid him off. And then he loaned me the money for a Charter Oak SC, I can't remember the, a Charter Oak compressor, I can't remember the model number. And then paid it off. And then he loaned me the money for my tube tech that I still have and cherish to this day and paid it off. And the construction on my big studio uh, was from a guitar player in a band that I was running sound for regularly. 
And he would watch me work really hard and he watched me for years and I was always at the gig early and I was always on time and my gear was always in good functioning order and I was just really always trying to be as professional as I possibly could. And then eventually uh, I needed money to build this studio, the my own studio. And I asked him to have a meeting with me and he did. And I had the whole thing laid out. Here's how much I need. Here's what I'm spending it on. And he loaned me the money with interest. And, and like, it was a, it was a full on loan, uh, and a payment schedule and everything. I had no credit at the time to, to get a loan from a bank, but I was fortunate enough to be really hardworking and to know enough people that I had two people that would loan me money. And, uh, it took a lot of hard years to pay that all off and pay them back. And without them, it's hard to say where I would end up. Like those, those two guys, uh, were so hugely instrumental in me getting where I am now. And, and I cannot thank them enough. Uh, one of them may be watching. I'm not sure you guys know who you are. If you're watching, thank you very like, really, thank you. So we're going to fast forward to about year 17, no, about year 18, somewhere about year 17 or 18 in my career. I'd never had any endorsements. I'd never been given gear for free. Uh, the start of this channel, well, for over half of this channel's lifespan, if you scroll back just a couple years, every single piece of gear that you see in those videos, I paid for. Uh, and and I, I did so over a long time with a lot of hard work. Now let's fast forward into the modern era because most of you are familiar with me from this YouTube thing. And most of you probably assume that I just got all my gear for free because of YouTube. But that is not the case. The, the vast, vast majority, a huge percentage of the gear that I have is gear that I worked really hard for and uh, paid for with my own money. Fast forward to about 2021. Somewhere mid-2021, I started finally getting a few pieces of gear because of YouTube here. Now, let me make a side note before we get into the YouTube side of thing and, and, and how all that works. Uh, if you are interested in starting a YouTube channel, you should. A hundred percent. I think every single person who's the tiniest bit interested in, it, interested in it should absolutely do it. And it's not just for the free gear. It's awesome in every sense, other than the negative comments. But we'll, we'll, I'll make a whole nother video on the YouTube side of this thing, but I wanna be transparent with you guys on how I've acquired gear recently. So starting in about 2021, uh, mid or late 2021 actually, uh, I started getting some gear for free to show on YouTube videos. And it was very small amounts of gear. I think the first one that I got was the Shure MV7 microphone, like a $200 microphone, and I made a video about it. And I didn't get paid to make that video. I just got the microphone for free and made the video. Uh, and so that's where things started. And then things started getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger as the view count rose. Because all these companies that I work with today the only thing they really care about, I have a good relationship with all of them, don't get me wrong, but if nobody watched my videos, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be working with them because they want their product in front of people. That's all they want. So I began working with Sweetwater and Sweetwater comes on as an affiliate partner where yeah, I put links in the description below, which there are in this video, more on that in a minute. And if you guys use those links, I get a commission off of that. So that started like 2021, I think. And uh, there was no sponsorship money. I wasn't getting paid to make videos. I wasn't getting very little free gear. Uh, but I started using this as an opportunity. Oh, I can make a video about this thing. Maybe I already have it, or maybe I just bought it. And then if people buy it, I earn a commission off of that. And so then that's where that started. And then the money that I would make off of that commission, I'm like, oh, that'll let me buy more gear because I have a full-time music career. So I'm just going to reinvest the, the money from this YouTube thing back into gear. And so that's what I did for, for a long time. And eventually things got bigger and bigger. And now, yes, I do have quite a few pieces of gear that I have not paid for. Uh, and that even more so than b not having been paid for, I was paid to make the video on it, which is part of the reason why I'm like, you, if you're interested, you should absolutely start a channel. But in the grand scheme of how much gear I have, you would be shocked at how little of it was actually given to me for free. It's a very small percentage of the total gear that I have. Now, I will say that running a YouTube channel channel is at this point is fairly lucrative and and I'm uh, blown away to say that I make more money from YouTube than I do 
from my music career, which is insane to me. But still, all that money just gets reinvested right back into the career. I'm redoing the whole room right now. You know, uh, there'll be a video coming on that soon. Like, no insulation company gave me thousands of dollars of insulation, and Lowe's didn't give me thousands of dollars in lumber. And like, you know, it's just there's a huge amount of money that goes into this stuff. Uh, nobody gave me these cameras to to make this YouTube videos. Like the the camera gear is crazy expensive, many 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 thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. I've put into camera gear and lighting and whatnot to be able to do these videos. So even though I'm making money off of YouTube, and yes, I'm getting some gear for free, uh, it is the vast majority of the money I make is still continually getting reinvested back into it. How do I make more money? And how do I, and now with this YouTube channel thing, how do I help as many people as I possibly can? Because I had to figure all this out on my own. And one of the people that has helped a huge amount helped me reinvest back into this is Sweetwater. So here's an ad read for you because honestly, Sweetwater has been hu a huge part of helping me get to where I am currently because they don't tell me what to do at all. Sweetwater gives me money to put an ad read in this in these videos and all they want you to do is click on the links down below and buy stuff from them. That's it. And most of the time, they don't even care what you buy. Like I they never tell me what to say. They never tell me what video I have to make. They never get to see any video before it's posted. The idea that I can sit here and talk to you about how I purchased all my gear from another company, from a music store that I used to work at uh, coming up, and yet I'm still doing a Sweetwater ad read, and all they want you to do is click on the links down below to buy stuff from them, and they support me that way. I cannot say enough good things about them. They are so good to me, and they have helped me out so much, uh, and they expect very little in return, and it's it's incredible. So anytime you guys need any piece of musical gear, you can jump on any one of my videos and click on any one of the links down below and purchase anything that you need. And it goes a long ways to help support this channel uh, and help me keep making videos just like this and help me keep reinvesting into my career. Uh, and that that's what this whole thing is about to me. So thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's maybe not as exciting of a story as I thought it was gonna be because it's just 21 years of hard work, 21 years, going on 22 of reinvestment, decades, literal decades of putting every single dime I have into music gear, uh, even when I'm being given stuff for free. So that that's how you get here. That's how I paid for all my stuff. This is not financial advice. I do not recommend that a 20 year old go so far in debt that he's giving his entire paycheck to his lenders. This is absolutely not financial advice but I just want you guys to know that this is possible. It's possible coming from absolutely nothing. No one coming up ever gifted me a bunch of stuff. There's no trust fund. There's no family money. I've been on my own my whole adult life, completely on my own. Uh, and I've just been lucky enough to meet a couple people and prove to them that I'm worthy uh, to, for them to loan me some money along the way. And uh, it's all been paid back completely. Uh, I have no debt. I have no debt for musical gear at the moment. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope that this inspired you, if nothing else. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.